convict us all? Do we wake up and say, Lord, thank you for today, or where's the coffee? <laughs> Get my toes off the ground. <laughs> See, then we can we can we can justify our sin. We can justify our sin and say, Lord, I'll be able to praise you better after I've had coffee. <laughs> But you see what I mean. Yeah. Here's, an, let me let's, here's another way for us to look at it. <clears throat> we spend a, When I worry about what I'm going to eat or what I'm going to wear, I'm worried about the dead guy. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. there, the, I, my physical, we, my physical worry. Is God concerned with my physical needs? Absolutely, positively, is concerned with my physical needs. But there is a part of me that's eternal. And, it, and, I, and I think one of the things that Jesus is trying to get across to us in this is that if we would apply as much as much time, effort, um, and and prayer about our spiritual needs as we do our physical needs, we would be better off. Yeah. God says, if we if you will seek my kingdom and my righteousness, I'll, all that other stuff will take care of itself. Now He's not saying you don't have to work. Well, we're going, we're all just going to quit our jobs and go out and and start praising the Lord somewhere and just reading scriptures and. And everything's going to be okay. Now that doesn't work that way. But, but the part of my, my life that I spend seeking God will be of more benefit to me than worrying about what I'm going to eat or what I'm going to wear. I was reading the scripture this morning in Timothy, I believe. I think it's in Timothy. Timothy or Thessalonians. It says, it says physical exercise profits a little. Or kind of. Son, but godliness, godliness benefits are, you know, enormous. Amen. When I seek, when I seek God's kingdom, when I seek to be godly, and I seek to be like Him, all that other stuff's going to fall into line. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let me read you John chapter. I want to read John chapter six, verse thirty. Um, yeah, flip over to John. Hold your place in Matthew chapter six. We're not, we'll come back there. I give you a little. I give you a little uh, preface for what's going on in John chapter six. It's right before. It's right before one of my favorite passages where he tells them, "Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me." And then a bunch of people get mad and leave. But uh, he's just fed the five thousand. Okay. He just fed the 5,000 in John chapter 6. And this is the next day. And he's gone to the other side of the lake. But they found. They, they went searching for him. And they, and they have found Jesus. Starting in verse 30. He says, therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe in you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. You know, we've been studying Exodus and, you know, on Wednesday nights and, and you know, the manna is, a, is one of those things that, <coughs> can you, can you imagine that, that every morning you wake up and there's manna on the ground mm -hmm. and you gather it up and that's what you eat and, and you're out in the desert and, and it happens every morning that God faithfully, every Every morning, there's manna there. Every morning, bang, bang, bang. And on the sixth day, there's twice as much. We gather twice as much, and then we don't have to spend time on the Sabbath. But, but every day, it happened. Every day. God was faithful every day. And the quail come in in the evening. And how, how used to that, that the Israelites became. And how unthankful that they became. Because they were looking at the manna and not looking at the one who was providing the manna. They were concerned about physical things but not spiritual things. Not, not focusing on how faithful is our God. That every day, every day he shows up to provide my needs. Every day he is there. Every day his Holy Spirit is with me. But he got, so these people have come in and they and, and, and he fed them yesterday. 
And they show up today and they're like, hey, what are you going to do for us today? How about bread from heaven? And Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you <clears throat> that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, and not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that all he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up on the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son, and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up on the last day. Jesus is saying to them, you know what? You got bread from heaven. I gave you bread. The, your, your forefathers got bread from heaven. That God sent to them. It wasn't from Moses. It came from God. And he's sending you bread today. That I am the bread of life from heaven. That comes down to you. And he says, you, you ate the bread yesterday and still you don't believe. Because these people didn't. They didn't recognize him. They, they missed the point. Their focus was, well, give us bread. Give us bread. Not on, wow, this must be the Messiah. This must be the Son of God. This must be the one who has, who he must be has sent down from heaven. Because this is just like our our forefathers ate manna that came down from heaven and, and, and this guy did this for us too. They weren't interested in Jesus. They were interested in more bread. And our physical, and we, you know, we can tend that way too. Our flesh part of us will tend that way too. Meet my physical needs, God. Here's what I, I want this and I want this and I need this and blah, blah, blah. God knows what we need. And what we really need more than anything is to know Him. Amen. What we need more than anything is to seek His righteousness and His kingdom because that has eternal benefits, not just not just a temporary benefits. Right. Philippians 4, 6 <clears throat> says this, Be anxious for nothing. Right? Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. You know, just like your little ones come up to you and go, I want some juice. And you provide it. God wants to do that for us too. But he wants us to come recognizing who he is. Not just to, not just to, not just that our physical needs might be met, but that our spiritual needs might be fulfilled. That we, that we would look at our, our God and say, I want to be like you. You know, I want to. I want to be like you. He goes on in the next in the next verse, back to Matthew chapter six, and he says this: "And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors." For, well, I've already prayed the prayer of forgiveness. I shouldn't need to do that. I shouldn't need to pray. I've already asked God to forgive me, so all my sins are forgiven. I give you, this is a good story. Turn to John 13. You know, this is Jesus teaching the disciples to pray, but in John 13, he's washing their feet. Um, one of the most amazing things, this is not really what I'm going to talk about, pull out of this passage, but one of the things that is amazing to me is that Judas Iscariot is still there. And Jesus washes the feet of the one he knows is going to betray him. That's forgiveness. Amen. I, I've said it to you before. You know, the, 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 in, the, in the Bible days, the task of washing someone's feet was the lowest job in the house. The very lowest job in the house. This, the lowest servant in the house was the one when, when guests would come into the house that they would wash the feet, the grime, 
off of the, the feet of the guests who came in the house so that they wouldn't track into the house, right? And so Jesus, before the Passover in John chapter 13, all right, let me find it here. Oh, Crystal's already there. It says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew his hour had come, that he should depart from this world, the Father having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God, and was going to God, blessed is the man who endures temptation. Wow. We went to, we, we switched. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He rose from supper, and he laid his garments, took a towel, girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which he was girded. And when he came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. And Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He who is, is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And now you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. I think it's interesting what Jesus said here. Peter, Peter comes... Before him, and he's like, you, you know, and it was, it was Peter, Peter's pride, and who, you know, he held Jesus up as his Lord and his Master, which is good. And when he, and I, you know, I would, I, my flesh would have struggled with this too. I think to, to have, you know, someone that you looked up to, and someone who was, who was your, you know, your Lord and your Master on his knees. Washing your feet. And Peter's like, no, I don't, want, I don't want you to do that. But that was Peter's pride that was keeping him from doing that. But it's interesting what Peter says. You know, Peter says, don't wash my feet. And Jesus said, no, I have to wash your feet. Peter's like, well, okay, if you're going to wash my feet, wash my head and, and my hands and my head, everything. And Jesus' response is, that's not what you need. You only need your feet washed. And, and I think in the Lord's Prayer, for us, he's, he's teaching believers how to pray, right? What did the foot washing represent? I mean, what's he trying? When, as the people walked outside in the road and in the world, they got grime on their feet. And when they came into the house, they needed their feet washed. The rest of them was okay, right? And I think when, when Jesus teaches us to pray and he says, Forgive us our sins as we for trespasses or debts, as we forgive those who, who are debtors against us. He's saying, look, you know, we travel in the world. You travel in the world. We need to be have repentance as part of our lifestyle, as our, our lifestyle of prayer. And you think about it. You think about all the junk that we come in contact with as Christians in the world. I mean, you go to work and people are cussing and 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 or, you know, you, you can't turn on the TV or open a magazine without, you know, sexually explicit stuff. That is, it's unbelievable that's out there that we come in contact with. And you didn't, so you don't, I didn't partake in it. No, you didn't partake in it, but you experienced it. You heard it. You saw it. You know, you were, and, and it's just grime from the world that gets on us. That we need to say, Lord, you know, wash that grime off me. It's just on my feet. You know, it's not in my heart, not in my head, it's on my feet, but I've been around it. You know, that's the, that's the world that I live in. And now I'm coming into your presence to, to be with you and, and just need that junk washed off. It might just be the ugliness of, of, of watching the news. That's my, that's my big one. I try to quit. <clears throat> I'm struggling with that. But, you know, just being around all that conflict and I hate you, you hate me, blah, blah, blah. We don't see eye to eye. 
that's not that's not biblical and it's junk it really is um that that is attacking our, our country right now it's a, it's a whole nother can of worms that i should never have even opened but it's something that for me personally i have to say lord forgive me of that wash that stuff off of me because i don't want to be that way i don't i don't ever want to be a person that just because somebody disagrees with me that i hate them other michigan fans <laughs> That was a joke. It was a joke. I like Michigan, sir. I like Michigan. Anyway, back to where I was. But daily, daily, a daily part, of, daily repentance on our part when we pray and go into the Father is it, a good thing for us in our lives. We should always be tender to you know to things in our life that are not pleasing to God. You know, the, the things that we get on us. You know, it could be something as simple as, as we pick up a phrase or something from somebody that uh, we start saying something that we shouldn't say. You know? We were talking Wednesday night about, about taking, we were going through the Ten Commandments and taking the Lord's name in vain. And, and somebody brought up the, well, I think Lord, brought up the fact that a lot of people, and I do it, it's like, well, good Lord. Or was it Sherry? Yeah, it was Sherry. That's right. I'm sorry. Good Lord. Or Lord have mercy. Those things are the Lord is good. The Lord does have mercy. But when we were actually saying it, were we saying it as an exclamation? Or was I saying it as, you know, not, I'm not trying to be legalistic. I'm just saying you know, that we fall into things that may not be pleasing to God in our lives. And we need to be tender to that. To be able to say, Lord, you know, that, that, I probably shouldn't say that, or I probably shouldn't watch that, or I probably shouldn't be uh, around around that. So when I'm coming into your presence, just wash that stuff off of me. I want to come before you right now with clean hands and a pure heart. I want to I want to hear your voice, and and I, I want you to, you know, be free to for your Holy Spirit to speak to me and say, here's what here's where we need to work on, you know, and just be putty and. In God's hands for him to mold us and make us. <clears throat> and then he goes on and he said, he says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That one's a, a tough one, you know. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Does God tempt us? Are you sure? Does the Bible say that Jesus was led into the wilderness that he might be tempted of the evil one? Making you think. I'm trying to make you think. Is it isn't. <clears throat> oh, there, there's a dilemma here. I don't think it's a dilemma. God tests us. Jesus was taken out in the Jesus was taken out in the wilderness that he might be tested of the evil one, that he might be tested. Of the whole, or the, that he might test the Holy Spirit that was in him. And <clears throat> the Bible in James chapter 1 says, let, When someone is tempted, let no one say he's tempted of God. God does not tempt his children. No. Does he test his children? Yes. From time to time. If we're not, t every school teacher, we got a couple school teachers, if you don't test your kids, they will never grow. If you don't test your kids, you'll never know what they need to get better. Right? Isn't that right? You know, I coached for a lot of years. And you know, you got to, you, you look at, you test your kids. You put them, you put them through things to, to see what they need to work on. And where, you know, where they need to get better. And I think God does that. God knows everything before he tests us. But there's some things that we need to learn, right? But when we, when God tests us, it is usually because he is, he is wanting us to prove him. In our life. That's why Jesus went. That's why the Holy Spirit took Jesus out into the desert. That Jesus might use the Holy Spirit and the word of God. To be victorious over the enemy. Before he started his ministry. It was Jesus. It was Jesus going out into the wilderness. And, and being able to say. I, you know, he, he faced the devil down. And the devil tempted him. Cast yourself. Or you know, you're the Lord of glory. You're hungry. You haven't eaten for 40 days. Turn that bread, or turn that stone into bread. Jesus looked at him and said, it is written. 
Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. Which goes back to give us our daily bread. What's more important? That Big Mac or the, or the word of God that comes from your Father's mouth? I know it's easy. It's, that's an easy one when you're sitting in church. Once it's 1130 and you're sitting at your desk at work. So it's a whole other choice, isn't it? <laughs> Non-destructive testing? Non testing, yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> James, let's read James chapter 1. I want to read that to you. That's a good passage. James chapter 1. Flip there. We're going to read a couple of verses. It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. Here, here's the thing. As a human being on this earth, you will be tempted. Right. It would be great if we never were tempted. Wouldn't it? Well, I don't know if it would or not. That scripture says that when we endure temptation and we're victorious over temptation... We receive a crown of life. And so there is some good that comes out of temptation. There is a, there, when, when God, when we as God's children can stand up to the enemy and the world's temptation, that's a good thing. Right? <clears throat> Which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Next, next verse. It says, let no one say when he's tempted of God. I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then sin, when, <clears throat> when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be <laughs> deceived, my beloved brethren. For every good and perfect gift is from heaven and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or no shadow of turning. That's a, that, that is who our God is. But temptation is going to come. We are going to face temptation in this life. Because why? Because I have desires in my flesh that are contrary to God. All of us do. All of us do. And we need to be aware of that. That's why, that's why in Jesus' prayer in, in, in Matthew 6, he says, we're not in the prayer, but after the prayer, he says, seek my kingdom and my righteousness first. See, when our desire is for his righteousness and not my desires and those things, those, those things that are contrary to God in my heart, if that's, if that's what I, I'm desiring, that's what I pray and that's what I ask for, then I'm not going to be led away by temptation. But I, we all have to realize that, the, the, that we are liable to be tempted. Um, I, I want to read two verses in 1 Corinthians. Almost done today. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. This is a good one. It says, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond. Oh, sorry. That's beyond <laughs> what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape for it. Or that you may be able to bear it. I want to get back to that verse 12 though. We let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. This verse is about humility, okay? And, and it's something that, that I think when, when Jesus is telling us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. He's trying to get that humility into us as his children. Because here's the thing. When we think that we're confident, when we get to think that we're confident and we're, you know, I can, <clears throat> I got this. I got the world by the tail. I'm, I'm, I am in control. That's when we fall. That's when we, when we lose fact, lose sight of the fact that we need God. That, that I am. It is possible for me to fall. It is possible for me to fall into sin and to be enticed. 
if I'm not on my guard. If I, lose, if I lose sight of the fact that, that the devil is out there, he's desiring, he is desiring to draw me away from God and destroy me. We lose sight of that. We can, it is possible for us to fall. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying possible to lose your salvation. I'm just saying well, it's possible for us to fall subject to the temptations and to fall subject to the sin of this world where the enemy wants to use it to destroy us. And so it is always good for us to remain humble and realize I have an enemy who desires nothing more than to rob, kill, and destroy me. But I have a, a God who wants to give me hope in the future. I have a God who is eternal and always looking out for him, for me. But I need to make sure that I am seeking and following after him. Amen. And not confident in, in my own flesh because my own flesh will will let me down. Amen? Amen. All right. Psalm chapter four, 141. This is King David, and I'm going to read you a little bit of Ephesians chapter 6. And we'll close out the Lord's Prayer today. <clears throat> Psalm 1. This is David speaking. He says, Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Is he seeking the kingdom? Yeah, absolutely. He's crying out to God, right? He says, let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting up as my, of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Oh my. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. And do not let me eat of their delicacies. This is, this, is a, this is David's prayer of, Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. And David's a, this, this is a prayer of David. And David was a man who knows and experienced falling through the wiles of the devil. Falling and allowing his, his, um, his flesh to lead him in a place where he was not, not destroyed, but definitely fell. And needed to repent and ask God. I mean, people tell me, you hear, you hear people say, well, God could never forgive me of what I've done. You don't know what I've done. Well, I'll tell you what. David was an adulterer and a murderer. And God loved him and forgave him. So I don't know what you've done. I don't know how bad you've been. Uh, but God can forgive you. And he still loves you. you. <clears throat> but David's prayer He's crying out to God say, and recognizing, look. And, he, and I, I like that scripture because he recognizes that the first place that he needs to be protected from is from his own mouth and his own lips. I will ask you a rhetorical question. That means you don't need to answer, okay? How many, uh, how many, how many times a day would probably be a better question. Do I say in my heart, I wish I'd never said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too many times, right? Too many times. But he, re he recognizes that. He says, Lord, don't, don't protect me from my own lips. Protect me from my own mouth. Protect me from what's in my heart that, that I know will lead me into, uh, into sin. And, and that's him saying, Lord, protect, don't lead me into temptation. But deliver me from the evil one. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6. Let's put on the whole armor of God. You guys read that one before, right? Amen. See, let's see. Don't don't turn go there yet, Crystal Wool. What's it start with? Oh my God. Now I know the kids can answer <laughs> this because I know they learn it. This is one of the big things they learn. So we we put on what? The what first? first? The helmet first? Mm -hmm. So the helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation. Jesus is our salvation, right? And then I put on what? Is that sure? You sure? Isn't it the belt next? Breastplate? Okay, the breastplate of righteousness. Well, Jesus is the breast our, our righteousness, right? Our righteousness is filthy rags. But our righteous, we are the righteousness of God where? Through Christ Jesus. So we got the Jesus as our salvation. Jesus as our breastplate. 
of, of righteousness, right? And then we put on the belt of truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Did he not? And so we have Jesus girt around our waist. What's next? Our feet shod with the God, our feet, our feet shod with the gospel of peace. Jesus makes the statement that He is our peace. It's pretty doing pretty good, right? Now what next? Now we are did the breast. Armor. No, it's the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit. The shield. Sword of the spirit. And then the shield of faith. Okay. The shield of faith. Oh. <laughs> You guys got your Bibles there. You can cheat a little bit. Okay. okay. The shield of what? Okay. The shield of faith. There. All right. We have the shield of faith. He is our faith. God has given us the the the, the what does it say? The, the measure of faith given to us that we might believe in Christ. And then. We already did the helmet, so we're already there. Now wait a second. Let's get, what's the real order? Who's got, who's got your Bible now? It's, Terry? It's, my Bible says first the shield, then the helmet, then the sword, which is the word. Right. Spirit. And Jesus is the word. My, my premise is this. When we put on the, when we put on the armor of God, it's all Jesus. Amen. The enemy sees, what does the enemy see? He sees Jesus, Jesus. on us. He doesn't see. He doesn't see some weak worm of the dust, who who he can defeat. We put on the armor of God, and he sees. He sees Jesus Christ in, our, in the helmet of our salvation, the breastplate of our righteousness, the belt of truth, the 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 feet shod with or shod with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. Jesus is the word of God, right? So that we might do what? Stand against all the wiles of the devil. But there's another part of it that, that the, these, these, this warfare equipment that we have. The, the passage starts off and it says that we, uh, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. But principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? And, and these are things for what? They are things... For prayer. Doesn't it say that you might pray? Well, let's read it. Yeah, I have it Let's read we, I'm, I'm proud to say that we butchered that today. We're trying not to read the scripture out of the scripture. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. I, kinda, that's, I never noticed that. Strong in the Lord. Did you get it? We put on the armor of God. We are in the armor of God. Be strong in the Lord. I am not strong enough to face the enemy in my own confidence and with my own flesh and blood. I need to be humble and realize I need Jesus. But finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And then the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That, oh, I like that picture. Thank you. Put on the whole armor of God and we'll be here soon. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Yes, it's all fall pictures. Go away. See? Therefore... <laughs> <laughs> Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Pray always. In prayer, in supplication, in the spirit, being watchful to this end, with all perseverance and supplication <laughs> for all the saints. When we, when we um, go into the world, the Ephesians tells us, you know, we're, we as God's people, I'll say, let me back up a second. <coughs> Jesus was not a devil hunter. 
Okay? He was a fisher of men. And he destroyed all the works of the evil one when he came across it. Right? And and we should have that same attitude. I'm not I don't go out searching for the devil. That's right. We don't have to really. He's out there. You know, we we, we live in a world that's that's full of sin and full of darkness and and, and we, as God's people, need to realize the only way that we can struggle and the only way that we can wrestle with that is in the Spirit and in prayer and in the power of God, not in our own strength. Amen. And so he's telling us, you know, this is, there's no real armor that we put on, but in the Spirit there is armor. Yeah. We realize that Jesus is our strength. Jesus is our righteousness. Yeah. Jesus is our victory. Jesus is the one who has provided us and gives us strength. He's the one who never leaves us or forsakes us. And so when I when you go, we go out as in, into the world as uh, as children of God, we need to go out prepared for that battle, prepared to realize that you know what, there's stuff out here, there's stuff out here that wants to destroy me. Greater is but greater is He that's in me that's in the world. Amen. Amen. Greater is the one who 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 lives in me. And so I can face all the I can face all the trials that the enemy has to put out for put for me out there, because Jesus has already defeated him. And it's not the battle doesn't belong to me, but it belongs to the Lord. And before I go out, I say, Lord, help me today. Come, you know, be with me today in strength and in, in, in power, because I'm going to need you today. Amen. You know, the, the enemy knows his time is short. He's getting desperate. Yeah. But he's a loser. Yeah. And you are more than a conqueror, amen? Amen. But we gotta pray. That that all that stuff is so that we might pray. Mm -hmm. That we might pray against the enemy, that we might pray our, our loved ones <laughs> into the kingdom, that our friends that don't know Jesus, that we might pray that they be loosed from the bonds of, of the enemy that hold them. And if we as God's people do not become a house of prayer. We will not, we will, we might make it to heaven, but we're not going to be victorious here on the earth. And God wants us to be victorious here. Amen. Amen. That the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Stand your feet. Yes. Oh, I forgot to take up tithes and offerings. I'll tell you what, the, off, the, the, uh, the uh, ushers will be back there as you leave. Just put your offering in the plate. Please. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are debtors against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the power and the for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I left that part out. You know, that's the prayer of faith. That's the prayer of faith. What are we praying? Well, we prayed in the prayer, right? That his kingdom would come, that his will be done, and at the end we say, For thine is the power is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Isn't that what we want to happen when we're, when we're done? Yes. That God's kingdom come, that his power be available, mm -hmm. that his glory be in, in our lives. That's what we're looking for, right? That's what the world needs to see. I bless you in the name of Jesus to leave this day with, with, with the kingdom of God in you. Father, with the power and the glory of Almighty God surrounding us. Lord, that we might go out and, 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 and witness for you. That we might go out. And seek and save the lost as Jesus did. Father, give us an opportunity just to spread the joy that we have from knowing you. Father, it, it is a wonderful thing to have Jesus Christ in our heart. It is a wonderful yes. thing to have the joy of the Lord, Lord surrounding us. And so, Father, let that, let that become infectious to the people around us. Lord, let us never have a countenance that's sour or, or ugly or, or, or fleshly. But, Lord, a countenance that reflects the glory of Almighty God is what we desire. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you today.